welcome to my channel and thank you so much for being here so um today i want to talk about how being raised in a strict household like the kind of effect it has on you and the way you end up being a parent you know personally obviously this is personal because I'm the only one here <laughs> but I was raised in a strict household like my parents so I was raised by my grandmother and my aunts my mom was in and out she had to like work far and stuff but she was there but um I think she was the one who instilled the strictness because when she was around the house was super strict but when she wasn't there it was a bit laid back but I was raised in this very very strict household um so raised in the hood I'm from Inanda in Durban if you're from Durban you definitely know Inanda and it's a typical township like kids play in the streets almost street games you'd go and play after school and the older you get maybe go chill by the corner because you don't play anymore and go chill with your girls and do whatever I wasn't allowed any of that like none of it I don't know but like literally my grandmother was a domestic worker so she'd leave the house like five o'clock in the morning and come back at eight o'clock at night so she wasn't really there but my two aunts were and they worked so basically after school they would leave the key they would hide the key either the, under the mat or in a tree somewhere but i knew where the key was i was expected to after school get home open for myself eat do homework wash my uniform and socks hang them go back inside and prepare maybe dinner or something to for the elders to eat i started cooking when i was like eight so all of that was expected of me during that time i wasn't expected to go play at all now that i think about it it was borderline abuse like i wasn't allowed to do anything fine i feel now that i think about it, it was like mm -mm. just before my aunt would get home i'd go play in the streets maybe like for an hour she used to get home around like four or five and literally someone would have to go if i want to go play in the street or if my friends want me to come out the deal was someone have to go stand by the road to be able to see when my aunt comes and when she comes everybody makes like a sound or some secret thing that we had to basically say listen watch out your aunt is here and i rush back home dust myself from the dust because it's dusty outside and pretend as if i never went anywhere and I grew up like that, like throughout my whole primary school years in Valela. Like you guys know it's in Valela, like damn. And high school also. In high school, my mom then took me to come live with her and my little sister. And it was the exact same thing. But it was a bit better with my mom because she was a nurse. And you guys know nurse, she is a nurse, and you guys know nurses work like long, crazy hours. So I knew her schedule and I knew when to when to be able to play and when not to and at that time all i wanted to do was just play but i was not allowed to play so i moved in with my mom and my sister and she was so strict with me you guys like she would it's calling i would knock off at two at school and she would expect me to be home at half past two if i'm home a second after half past two it's a beating it's a disciplinary hearing it was just a lot you know and I didn't understand, obviously, at that time why she was doing that. I just didn't, I still don't understand, but I did, at, more so at that time, I didn't understand. You grow up, and I remember as a matric, people talking about, in grade 11, actually, before I even get to matric, in grade 11, that's when, obviously, you're a bit grown -ish now, and you are going to these parties and stuff. I was never allowed to those parties. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even ask my mom, because I knew she would say no. In hindsight, maybe she saved me from a lot of things, but I wish... The option to ask was there i didn't even have to ask because i knew she would say no and then in the trick same thing like people would go to these parties or people would on mondays talk about things that happened over the weekend and i'm just like how did you guys where were you over the weekend and be like oh my mom slept over in my house or my i slept over in my mom's house and i'm just like you guys do sleepovers i went through my whole life not ever doing a sleepover ever like i don't remember ever going to a friend's house to sleep there because my mom was just like sleep over for who but the strictness got to a point where for me that is small but it got to a point where i can't talk to you about boys i can't talk to you about my periods i can't talk to you about changes in my body i can't talk to you about anything because you're that much of a strict mother 
and for me it it built resentment it built a lot because i was surrounded by people who were very open with their mothers and i envied that and i wanted it you know i remember my first boyfriend the love of my life you know you when you're young if the first guy is your love of your life passed away you know he was stabbed when we were in the trip and i wasn't able to talk to my mom she knew she knew about it because i wasn't able to talk to her my best friend's mom is the one i was able to cry to every time and talk to her about and stuff and that's when i realized that growing up in a strict family the downfall is just the downside i mean it's just so hectic because now i'm at an age where i want to start talking to you but i can't because you've created that um environment where we don't talk about these things and at that age she still believed i was 16 when my boyfriend died and she still believed that ujoli like why why we shouldn't be talking about these things i then realized that okay clearly this is just the relationship that we have this is just who you are you're just strict and you're just crazy <laughs> because some of the things that i had to go through i go guys it was crazy like i don't want to dwell too much into it because i want to talk more about how it has affected how i parent you know so went through basically my whole high school without knowing what a sleepover was the first sleepover was a dress and nakona because i literally ran away from home to go study in another province just to understand independence and be by myself just get away from everyone i left and i came to pretoria and then i found my independence my younger sister by the, on the other hand was raised differently she was allowed sleepovers we are six years apart so i'm assuming that maybe by the time that my sister was at an age that the age I was at, my mom realized what the mistake she made with me and she rectified it with her. So she was allowed sleepovers, she was allowed to go to parties, she was not in a strict household. As a result, my sister today is able to, my mom is a nurse, my sister today is able to call my mom and ask her for contraceptive pills. I can't, I've never been able to do that, you know? So being raised in a strict family and in a strict household also made me like i'll be scared of talking like i don't i don't talk i don't talk to my mom at all um and i'm not not to say that maybe if she was less strict i wouldn't have felt pregnant but i do feel like that that door would have been open i would have known about contraceptives i would have known i would have not only known about it but i would be able to ask them from her because obviously at that age i wasn't working i didn't have medical aid so i go to free clinics and you guys know how judgmental the nurses are free clinics are 17 16 17 year old coming to the clinics to go quick to get contraceptive pills mm -mm. they will shout at you and stuff so we end up not doing all of those things because we are trying to protect ourselves from the judgment of the, the healthcare workers so i do feel like maybe if my mom was a bit open with me Maybe I wouldn't have felt fallen pregnant. Maybe I would have known that, you know what, there's a contraceptive, you need to take it every day or whatever the situation is. My mom is so much calmer and softer with my sister now. And I'm always just like, where was all of this energy when I was around, you know? And as a result, obviously I'm not saying that it's a result of my mom's doing, but I'm saying that it could have been different. My sister don't, didn't have a child at an early age. And I do feel like, really my childhood or my teenage years or my young adulthood um life would have been different if i had a better relationship with my mom for life if she wasn't so strict i mean when i felt pregnant the second time there was a point where she was just like no you need to tell me these things at that time i'm 30 now you want us to be friends and i just find it awkward i can't be your friend it's where do we start you know like something that has it's been 30 years and you've never given me an opportunity to talk to you and you've never created that space so fast forward here when I knew when I had my own kids, that's definitely going to be different. I am not a strict parent <laughs> to a fault. You know, I do discipline my kids, but not as hectic as I've seen how other parents, like when I go through Twitter and see how people talk to their kids and discipline their kids, I'm just like, what am I doing wrong? And also then does that mean that my child is going to, not cope or survive in society when she finally gets out because maybe she's too free i don't know i don't know how to explain it but well alan is allowed sleepovers um i know alan is friends and their friends have allowed at my house and she's allowed at their house obviously as long as the parents know about it i talk to my daughter about boys i've been talking to my daughter about boys since she was five you know and one time I, I remember talking to my child about boys and my mom was just like i just don't think it's a good idea at that time my was living and she was telling me about her crush at school my mom was just like i don't think it's a good idea for you to be talking to Alanda about boys was he? and i was just like 
if only you knew I was 12 and I had my first boyfriend. So this this is the age, you know, she's going through puberty, she's figuring out a lot of stuff, but she talks to me. And I've never personally sat her down and said, you can talk to me about anything, but I think maybe she sees, because I talk, guys, obviously, I have this whole channel dedicated to me talking. So I talk about the things that I go through. I may not talk about my feelings a lot, but I do talk about the things that I go through. Everybody knows what I go through, including my ch my children. And sometimes it's not, a, I'm talking to you about what I'm going through, but maybe she hears me on the phone. I don't go hide in the room and be like, oh, okay, I'm not feeling good today. And that's why for me, I'm saying that maybe it's a fault, you know. So my, my dilemma now is I am trying so hard to not raise my kids the way I was raised. But where do we draw the line? You know, are there things that I'm supposed to hide from her? Like, obviously, I don't talk about hectic, hectic feelings and hectic, hectic stuff. But she will hear me over the phone um, complaining to my friend about, oh, I went on a date and this happened. Or... A f another friend of mine did, did this and this and this and this happened, you know, so this is where for me I feel like, okay, where do I then bridge, like where do I bridge that gap and being, I don't want to be too strict and I don't want to be like a disciplinary, like I don't want to, I don't want you to feel like every time you come to me, it's a disciplinary hearing. I don't want my child to have, and I know she doesn't because when I say to her, Alanda, we need to talk, she doesn't jump. <clears throat> she does not have we know it i know when someone says we need to talk i'm like oh shit what did i do but i don't haven't realized and i say to her we need to talk she doesn't jump she's just like okay cool what do you want to talk about and i like that so i'm just like okay cool i'm getting that right but um i do worry that sometimes maybe i do overshare around her or maybe to i don't really shit to her but i do overshare around her i'm not cognizant about my surroundings when she's around like i will talk about whatever i want to talk about nothing stops and it, obviously you guys saw the video we did if you didn't i'll just like link it below where she basically asked me anything that she wants to ask me and some of the questions she asked were things like off camera you know she asked me like oh have you ever had an abortion um what else did she ask where my mom overheard the attention my mom was just like what what does she even know about an abortion what are we? and i was just like it, it, it triggers me because I'm just like, I wish you were that person to me when I was growing up. Now my mom is. Now she's amazing. I can talk to her about anything right now. I can be like, oh, can I sit down with you? This is a problem I'm facing and I don't know what to do. Now she's amazing. But it's awkward to both to start that relationship at the age of 30 plus, you know. And because we live together, I'm trying for us to have that relationship. But I do feel like if... As the minute I moved out of home, that relationship is, is going to be done. And I don't want the same thing to happen for my kids. I want my kids to know that no matter what or how embarrassing or what you think or how bad you think things are, you can talk to me. I want my kids to know that you can call me if you're stranded at 4 o'clock at some club. Even if you didn't tell me you were going to that club. Because there's so many things that happen where as a girl child, you literally could have called your parents to come fetch you. And then now you're stuck you would sneak out and now you're stuck with this guy at this guy's home. So maybe you went to a party and now you're stuck at this guy's home because he promised to take you home at a certain time and he now he's telling you that he's too tired or he's too drunk and he wants to sleep. You guys know that old old trick in the book. They may be like, you know, I'm too tired to take you home, please sleep. And they try and do things. But now, if, yeah, I know I was wrong. I was supposed to say where I was going. But if I had a relationship with my parents, I could just be like, listen, mom, I'm in trouble right now. I need you to come get me. Luckily, nothing bad has ever happened to me in that situation where, you know, you end up being thrown out of a car or you end up being raped because now you're stuck at this person's house where you could have called your parents or your sister or someone home, you know. But I do know of stories where young girls are finding themselves being kicked out in the middle of a freeway because she changed her mind about going home with the boy and then just like get out of my car and that's when you need to be able to call your mother your dad your uncle whoever you're close with but unfortunately we can't and that's the kind of environment i'm creating for my daughter i wanted to know my daughters um I, I right now i'm speaking a lot about alanda because she's obviously getting to that this i'm trying to create for my daughters but i do worry that maybe i too liberal for lack of a better word in raising them as i said guys i i'm not strict at all my kids are allowed to do whatever they want to do obviously as long as we talk about it and 
I do like that because I have noticed that Alwanda is not scared of me, but she respects me, and that's all I've ever wanted. Like, I don't want my child to be scared. I was scared of my mom. I st still am, <laughs> you know. And as much as she was not a violent person, she wouldn't like beat me up like crazy, but she just has this look or this energy where, and then she gives you the silent treatment, and I'm just like trying to stay away from that. So I do like the fact that my child does, is not scared of me. I've seen she's not scared of me because sometimes I'm just like, girl, who do you think I am? She's like, my mom, and I'm just like, okay, I like that, I like that, but like, damn, I'm still your mom, you know. But um, she's not scared of me. She respects me. I've seen that, and I like that. But I do worry about maybe I'm too nice and i'm too like when i say guys i'm not strict and i don't i hardly have to discipline them you know and obviously the toddler she's a toddler but with alwani she listens you know when you tell her to do something she, i mean she'll take her time but she listens she'll do whatever it is that you need to tell her we never really have to have disciplinary hearings except for like homework maybe she'll come back and not do homework then i'll take her phone or i'll take her laptop and things like that and we don't really have as intense issues that I have with my mom. And I hope it stays that way. So the point of this video basically was just like, I don't know if I'm doing it right. There is no manual with motherhood or parenthood, let me say. And I don't know if my way of parenting now, I don't know if the way I was raised has is basically controlling me. And I don't want to get to the point where it controls me because I was raised in a very, very strict household. I, in hindsight, I understand why my aunts and my mom were strict, and I understand those about why they were in Valela. I mean, their way it was protecting me. But the minute I was able to find freedom, I found freedom in Nami at the same time. Like, I felt pregnant immediately after I left home. So, I always ask myself that maybe if I wasn't coming from, if I didn't come from such a strict family, maybe. I probably wouldn't have felt pregnant, you know, because I would have been so used to that freedom. But the minute I found freedom, I ran with it, literally ran with it. So now I'm trying to give my kids freedom so that they don't get impressed by the smallest things because I was. <laughs> As you know, the minute I was out of home, Jesus, the minute I was out of home, I did a lot of things. I started drinking heavily. I started just like exploring my sexuality heavily. I started just doing things. Everything was done times 10. And I do think that I was rebelling against the system. The system. I, I was rebelling against being raised like that. And now I'm making sure that my kids are not raised like that. But where do we draw the line? Do you guys have the same issue? Were you raised in a strict family? And for this conversation, you don't even need to be a mom to even relate. If you were raised in a strict household, how did it affect the way you do things now? How did it affect your relationship with your parents or your aunts or whoever raised you? And how did it affect the way you do things? Do you think that if you were given freedom as a child, you wouldn't care for it now? Well, obviously now you probably don't care about it, but like this time when maybe like 18, 19, 20, did you overdo a couple of things because of how you were raised and if you're a mother how are you raising your kids are you raising your kids the same way or are you like me going left but left that is also quite good for you and the relationship you're gonna have with your children and your children i do believe that not being as strict is good for my kids but i worry that i maybe blur the lines a bit maybe like i'm not the fact that i hardly discipline them you know but i mean they still they still good kids They still good kids, you guys. <laughs> but um, that's, I've come to the end of this video. And once again, thank you so much for your support and watching my videos. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.